if you want to visit places like this. What about places with these guys? It says Zigzag Railway. You can find places like this as well. Do you like camping? Do you like four wheel driving? Do you have no one to show you the way? Well today, I'm gonna to show you four hacks on four apps on how to get in the bush today by yourself safely. These tips are good, but don't let them replace your paper maps. What you can let them replace are these expensive GPS units. This one costs about 600 bucks. You're getting in the bush for under 30. Beautiful place. Two of the apps you've already got on your phone. The other two, there's a little price, but you'll be in the bush for under 30 bucks. Apps you say. Don't worry, this is good for Android and iOS. Now with these tips, it's not just for four-wheel driving. You can use it for bushwalking and on the motor. So with the tutorial, I'm gonna go through it quickly so you can see whether or not you wanna watch the whole thing. If it's too fast, stay tuned because I'll go through it nice and slow for you. So this is an overcap of the process. So you load up Instagram, find a post. Looks like a nice place. Thanks a lot. Travel log off road, like the post, go into the data, find out where it is, open it in maps, go all the way down until the data loads for that area. Mongolo, New South Wales. Jump over into Wiki camps, do view map, mong, done, zoom out until you find out where it is, nothing there, yes there it is, down here, brings you straight to the place, remember to remove the search to bring up more data around the area, check it all out, find out what it is that you like, when you've decided this place is good, Move on to the next app, which is Hema Maps. Find that place again. That was just outside of Canberra. Um, once, you, once you've done this a few times, you'll find it really easy. Find out what's around there. National Park, State Forest. Find out all the places of interest. Look them up on Google. See what they all are. Look them up on YouTube. So what is the place? So Pigeon House Mountain, look that up on YouTube. Looking that up on YouTube. Pigeon House Mountain. Refine the search. So you're looking at the latest data this year. Apply. Complete your research around that area. Look at all the um, hiking, four wheel driving, um, and camping, it's still the, if it is the place you want to go and you've decided, click back over into maps. Do a download of the area. So you've always got a map offline. Download. Jump in the car and go there.
Okay guys, so I'm not going to go too far into the use and application of the applications to plan your trips, but I will give you a slight overview on my process for finding places to go and the planning that goes into the trip itself. So obviously the first thing that comes to mind is where are we going to go? So social media is the best outlet for that. Um, I particularly like using Instagram for my inspiration. Um, generally, uh, within the group of my friends, we will send, pla send places to each other through instant messages. But this is generally just how we do it. Obviously, we try to stay in New South Wales for the places that we're visiting. But let me give you a quick example of how we go about it. So, I'll quickly find one here, Braidwood, I know that's in New South Wales, so but let's give that place a look, um, obviously not a very inspiring picture here by Travelog Off-Road, um, I'll give it a like, because Braidwood is a beautiful place and I have been there myself. So the first thing we do on Instagram is we find the place, look to see if it has a map location, we open that in maps and we see what area that is in. So let's zoom down to Braidwood in New South Wales, just outside Canberra. That is the beginning of the trip planning. Instagram, find the general location, and then step it up to the next phase. Okay, so the second stage of the project or planning of the trip would be to figure out the camping now this app i've been using for quite a while now it's got to me all the way from sydney to the top end the very tip of australia and back it's kept camping costs and directions stress at a minimum it's a community-based app wiki camps australia where the community is actually adding the sites caravan parks um, places of interest, it's all added by the community, not actually Wikicamps. Now, transferring the data from my search in Instagram, I will be typing up the top here, Braidwood. Now, it's quite a good idea not to type in the whole word because what it will do is it will do a broad search of the whole map and bring up all areas that have braid in it. Now we can see down here that um, there's a place in Goulburn that starts with it and a place here. Like any search, sometimes you can give it too much information and there may not even be campsites in Braidwood that start with Braid. But it is a good starting point to find where it is on the map. So it's down here of, of course, just outside of Canberra. So once you get down there and you've found it on, you get rid of the search, clear it out and it will bring up any extra stuff around that area that doesn't have braid in the name, but, but generally just typing in the first few letters of the area will get you a point on the map. So the information on this map gives you all the types of camping in the area. It's quite an invaluable app. Obviously, you can like areas that you've been to. Obviously, I've been to whatever that place is there. I enjoyed it. Now, it's a very top level app, Wiki Camps, and it won't give you detailed track maps. Um, it's very reliant on having 3G reception for your data. And once you go out of data, it does become a little more blurred. The track, the main roads and tracks will be there, but it will be on much, much higher scale, not so in depth. So that's as far as I would take the use of Wikicamps, just to check that number one, there's camping in the area, and number two, if there's any facility. Okay, so we're in Hema Maps now. Um, obviously, we need to find Braidwood. I already looked up that a little bit earlier. You can navigate around. I'm sure the search function will work quite well with it. Generally, I know where I am most of the time to find it. Anyway, what do we see on these maps? Okay, so Hema Maps is fantastic for looking into national park data and state park data um, if i zoom down here onto monga national park 
Mungo, Mungo, Munga National Park. Gotta love the Australian names of these places. The information within the parks is very valuable. In this park here, you can see all this um, green spot here, this national park. That color never changes. It's the same for every national park in Australia. And on the flip side there, you'll see the lighter green. That state park, that never changes as well. Um, a different color you'll find is the green with these little triangles. They're your pine plantations. Not a great place to visit the pine plantations. They're usually very dry and uh, if you've ever been to them, you'll understand. Obviously the level that we're on here is an overview level. It gives you an outline of where the main roads or the main trails are within these forests. You can always zoom in. Now these maps are loaded onto your phone. You have to pre-download them. And when you're out in the bush, they can take some time to load depending on the device that you have. Generally, you won't have it off the screen or loading for any more than five minutes. So this is why I try to reiterate the fact that you need a couple of apps or a couple of devices or a couple of different map reading abilities to keep yourself safe and this is just one of the ones that i use of course so let's go back up here to braidwood and we'll see what's around there just for example sake so am i on braidwood and i think i've lost myself a ruin camp area i know this is braidwood here a ruin i've actually stayed there before quite a great place there is an off-road camping site just on the road here they do have facilities there you can get more information on this one just like you can in wiki camps you can delve deeper into it a ruined road this goes right out in the bush there's quite a good couple of creek crossings they actually show you gates on some maps i don't believe there's any gates in here mongarala river picnic area so it, it's quite a good map to have in your pocket and especially because it's got the record function. Um, you can record where you've been, where you're going, especially if you run out of data or your maps aren't loading, you can still actually follow the maps around. I'm not gonna record that track so you don't actually go anywhere. I'll show you a couple of examples of what they look like. I do have some up here in New South Wales, up the top here. So this is all my national park, a loop I've done top level I uh, had no idea where we were going I followed the process I knew I was going there and I followed this process which allowed me to go into the forest and follow these tracks around even though at points on this system the maps weren't loading although it was always recording so I was able to track where I've been and follow my way back out and around so that's what it looks like from the high level and then you can delve right in you can put notes and stuff like that as you do on the track or you can do them earlier and of course you can put your waypoints just like these ones down here start here finish there you can measure in between there's lots you can do it i'm not going to go into that if you want more information drop a message below i'll always reply to my messages um, i can create a better video for you there otherwise there is a lot of content on youtube to explain how to use these apps which brings me to the next phase, researching the tracks. And of course we go to YouTube for this one. YouTube and Google, they're the number one um, sources of information for me when researching tracks. So let's, let's jump right into that as well. Okay, so there is two ways to use YouTube. Um, this is obviously the phone app. Um, most of my research I usually use a PC or an ex the PC Explorer so obviously we're checking out Braidwood do a quick search Braidwood comes up what kind of information do we have New South Wales what else comes up lots of stuff here Braidwood farmers so what we're looking for, of course, we're actually going bush, we're actually looking for tracks around Braidwood. 
So this one's not going to help us. So braid wood dash four wheel drive, and this is the process I would go through. More importantly, because we're trying to find track data, we want recent track data. So anything like three years away, six years, these aren't really going to be of any use to us because everyone knows tracks change and if you're a beginner then you're going to need to know exactly what you're up for. I mean it's fun to look at what used to be in the past but it's not really going to be much help to us on this trip. So we're going to go into a site filter. Obviously upload date is what we're interested in here. So we're going to drop that down to this year. Now it is only February when I've recorded this tutorial so I don't really think it's going to bring up that much for Braidwood. Here we go, seven months ago. Doesn't seem like this year, but um, it must have been back to the last 12 months. So some great information here. We can see people posting related videos to tracks and common places that people or locals would go to for a challenge. I would simply just be going through all this so I would know what to expect when I get out there. Braidwood camping, I'd check out what the campsites look like. Still, again, every time you do a search, you're going to have to change this. And this is just using the app. Look, the app is a really powerful tool for planning your trip, and I cannot recommend it enough. So, once you've done all your research and you know where you're going in Braidwood and you've got a good idea of what everything's going to be like, you'd move over to the last checkpoint and that is back in maps so we'll load maps back up and because google maps is such a detailed map system and online we need to transfer this data so we can have it when we're out in the bush and in areas where reception doesn't exist so open up the menu go to offline maps go to select your own map and take a download of the uh, Braidwood area. If you were going higher, lower, obviously the more you zoom in, the more you zoom out, the more data it's going to use, but these maps really aren't that big, so download as much as you want. It's not going to hurt. The maps do expire within a month unless you've used them again. If you happen to search on that area, Google Maps will just update the map in your memory and it will always be there. I downloaded a map from the Northern Territory. I used it, hadn't looked at it for a month, hadn't even searched in that area for a month. The Google Maps app will just delete it off your phone. So it's, it's not necessary to go in there and delete the data all the time. I don't mind keeping them on there because I could uh, end up in the bush there on an unplanned trip. Very rarely do I unplan a trip, but um, yeah, that's my process on the apps. All right, so a quick recap of the process. First of all, find your place. Social media is your best outlet for that. So remember, we're looking for posts of places people have gone. So you load up Instagram, find a post. Looks like a nice place. Thanks a lot, Travelog Off-Road. Like the post, go into the data, find out where it is. Open it in maps. Go all the way down until the data loads for that area. Mongolo, New South Wales. Jump over into Wiki Camps. The view map. Mong. Done. Zoom out until you find out where it is. Nothing there. Yes, there it is down here brings you straight to the place remember to remove the search to bring up more data around the area check it all out find out what it is that you like when you've decided this place is good move on to the next app which is Hema Maps find that place again that was just outside of Canberra um, once, you, once you've done this a few times you'll find it really easy Find out what's around there, National Park, State Forest, find out all the places of interest. Look them up on Google, see what they all are. Look them up. 
on YouTube. So what is the place? So Pigeon House Mountain, look that up on YouTube. Looking that up on YouTube. Pigeon House Mountain. Refine the search. So you're looking at the latest data this year, apply. Complete your research around that area. Look at all the um, hiking, four wheel driving, um, and camping. It's still, the, if it is the place you want to go and you've decided, click back over into maps. Do a download of the area. So you've always got a map offline. Download. Jump in the car and go there. That's my process. It's never failed me. That's what I will do from today on forever. Um, I don't think anyone has really gone wrong with this process. I thought it's a good idea to share it with all of you. Um, tell me what you think. Drop any um, suggestions down below in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if there's anything else I can do, please also drop that in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video or you found it useful, please like and subscribe and share as much as you can. Thank you.